Racetracks are our battleground. They come in all shapes and sizes with many different qualities and key features. Some are almost universally loved, and there are those that are universally disliked, and let's not forget the tracks that drivers either love or hate, but with no in-between. I'm Bo, and today I'll run you guys through my top 5 favourite road tracks on the iRacing service. I wanted to make this list because when the topic of tracks comes up in my Discord server, I often find myself with very different opinions from the rest of my community on the server. But I was curious to see what you guys on YouTube thought. And to get things controversial straight away, you won't find Spa Francorchamps, Silverstone, Monza, Le Mans, Sebring or Road Atlanta on this list, which I'm fully aware I've already insulted half the iRacing community. However, starting us off at number 5 may not be the biggest shock on this list. Autodromo Internazionale Enzo Edino Ferrari, or better known as Imola, is a genuinely fantastic racetrack that I think most people will agree is worthy of almost anybody's top 5 list. Massive curbs you can use to launch the car over, great overtaking opportunities throughout the lap and some globally recognised corners such as Aqua Minerale all add up to make Imola one of the most personality filled circuits on the iRacing service. The track has recently had an off-track detection update which has meant overall the track is a bit more lenient than it once was in most corners, but on the flip side, in some other corners like the phenomenal Variante Alta Chicane, the track limits have been tightened up so much that the traditional racing line through the chicane for so many years can no longer be taken. Despite this, it is still Imola and it is still bloody fantastic to drive with so many great sequences of corners following one after the other. Imola also features one of the longest pit lanes in all of iRacing, which can be a deciding factor in endurance races with fuel saving to avoid an extra trip down the long pit lane, saving a bucket load of time. The circuit suits a wide variety of cars too, so you shouldn't feel too restricted in choice here. Anything from Formula 1 cars to the Toyota GR86 will work great around the track and provide some close racing, with significant drafting opportunities down the ultra-long front straight, which doubles up as a DRS zone in open-wheel cars. Coming in at number 4 on the list is the first of the tracks I think will raise quite a few eyebrows. A relatively recent addition to the iRacing sim, Oschersleben is one of the lesser known circuits from Germany, but in my opinion a worthy equal to the Nürburgring Grand Prix track, and a far better venue than Hockenheim in its current configuration. This track is probably most famous for its opening corner complex, which once left a commentator remarking that If the guy who designed this first corner should be taken in a dart room and beat about the head, that is just neat. I've never seen anything that bad. What lies beyond that first corner is a fantastic technical circuit with a tremendous flow. Admittedly, this track doesn't produce the most over-the-top side-by-side racing, but for a pure driving experience, I struggle to find many circuits that can top Oschersleben. Highlighted by several long corners that tighten up on the exit, this is a proper driver's circuit and doubles up as a perfect test bed for shaking down new cars. You need to understand perfectly where the car's grip limit is to find the lap time around this track, with plenty of understeer waiting for you to go just a smidge too far. Typically here I'd highlight a favourite section of the track, but honestly, the entire track is a highlight. This track is a bit more on the technical side, so the ultimate high speed cars like an Imps or GTP or an Indy car won't really work around here too well. Realistically at Oschersleben, the fastest cars we'll be racing would be the LMP3 or GT3 cars. However, anything slower than this should work nicely too, with multiple layouts that cater to any series. And yes, even a layout without that corner. In the middle spot on this list, we head to the land of the rising sun, Japan. This country hosts many world-renowned circuits, such as the famed Suzuka with its high-speed S's and 130R corner. There is Fuji with its enormous front straight and crazy long right-hander set against one of the most remarkable backdrops in all of motorsport. Whilst both of these are fantastic circuits, they just don't quite grab me as much as some of the other Japanese tracks on the iRacing service. But don't worry, I'm not talking about Sakuba here, but about the often overlooked Twin Ring Motegi circuit. 
This track's flow catches many people off guard with its fast, sweeping corners, immediately leading into considerably slower hairpins that are almost designed to make you lock up the inside tyre. All of this is done on a high abrasion, low grip track surface that punishes tyres, which is somewhat of a recurring theme for Japanese circuits, but especially so for Montegi. The circuit is great for cars of all speeds and is wide enough to work well for multi-class racing with more than enough opportunities to pass. Even if it goes a little bit wrong, there aren't many circuits out there with quite as much runoff as Motegi. It is an older scan these days, so graphically it may not be one of the most amazing looking tracks on the iRacing service, but it does redeem itself from that department with a fully fleshed out night lighting across its several layer. The Grand Prix layout will always be kicking my eyes, but the East layout does also get plenty of love in the official's calendar, and just in case you thought I was joking when I said that there is something at this track for everyone, it even has a fully functioning oval too that IndyCar used to race at back in the day. But you know, iRacing doesn't have IndyCar, just some silly little US open wheel cars, so what does that matter? Coming in at the runner-up spot on this list is the epic Virginia International Raceway, which was abhorrently underappreciated until it was made free content. Now that it is free of charge and recently given a total overhaul with a brand new scan and rebuild, VIR is finally getting the love it deserves. Packed with incredible elevation changes throughout the lap, a super fast S section, not one, but two crazy long straights, and even some tight technical sections, you'd be struggling to find some negatives to say about this track or to find something it doesn't have. It truly has it all. On the Patriot layout, it even has a corner name that is also used as an insult, but I might let you guys figure that one out on your own. After the recent graphics overhaul, the circuit is a little intensive on the frame rate, however it is graphically stunning, even if we are now missing the infamous oak tree in the middle of the circuit. The track I feel works best in GT cars, however it is large enough to cater to almost any vehicle on the service and provide superb racing with the two large straights being separated by only a handful of corners in between, so more often than not you can end up with some draft packs around this track resulting in some last lap showdowns. VIR also features a vast amount of runoff in most places on the track, making it a great starting point for those beginning their iRacing careers. However, a handful of corners, like Oak Tree, still have no problem hurting your car should you overstep the mark. Coming in at the number one spot though, there really should have never been any doubt. It is the incredible Nürburgring Nordschleife circuit with its staggering number of corners spread across the 26 km course. There really is no more significant challenge in all of racing than to push a car to the absolute limit on a hot lap around this circuit with no margin for error around the entire lap and the Armco just waiting for you to slip up at any moment and end your day early. To do a 24 hour race around this track, especially in the nighttime stints, is a brutal task and tests you to your mental limit. There is no other track like it, and I firmly believe there never will be ever again either. This track is easily the most rewarding in the entire service to learn with such a big learning curve required to understand the whole 8 minute long lap. That first time you can race around here without hesitating on which way the corners go is a genuinely exhilarating experience and one that almost every sim racer remembers. It even races well too, with the large straights providing plenty of room to overtake, so long as you're patient enough through the tight and winding middle and final thirds of the lap. That last third of the lap in particular is, in my eyes, the most incredible stretch of racetrack in the entire world. The flow is impeccable with a constant left-right, left-right flow as you crest and fall through the elevation change, even with the odd little jump thrown in for good measure. Not every car can race safely around this track, but honestly, we've all tried throwing a Formula 1 car around the track for fun, so who am I to say what you can and can't drive here? That pretty much concludes what I believe are the top 5 best tracks on the iRacing service for road racing. This is, of course, an opinion piece, so I don't expect everyone to agree with me here. 
I certainly imagine both the Oshsleben and Motigi votes will raise a couple of eyebrows in particular, so by all means, let me know your thoughts and your lists down below in the comments section. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button too. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the following video.